our second PowerPoint slide. And this one is talking about matter part two. Okay, so there are basically four states of matter. You have a solid, you have a liquid, you have a gas, and of course plasma. And we'll talk about plasma in a second. So let's start with the easiest, and that is a solid. So solids, like if we look at the brick up here, it has a definite shape. And if I were to measure the volume, I could do length times width times height up there to find the uh, volume of that particular uh, object. Then we have liquids. Liquids have an indefinite amount of shape. That means they're going to take the shape of the container that they um, are in, but they have a definite volume. So if I pour the liquid in a graduated cylinder, I can measure its volume. Gas has an indefinite shape, meaning I can squeeze it, I can expand it out. If it gets hot, it expands out. If it gets cold, it contracts in. has an indefinite volume, so again, the same thing based on temperature. Its volume can change as well. Uh, and then the last one is plasma. Plasma, again, is your charges. Plasma is found in lightning, is found in the universe, is found in stars. It's basically positive and negatively charged particles. Very similar in consistency of a gas, but it's found in lightning and things like that. Okay, so what we have right here, the law of conservation of matter, basically says that matter in the universe can't be created or it can't be destroyed. Basically, when I use it up, it's going to change its form from either a solid to a liquid or to a gas and it's just going to transfer from one form to another. Okay. Uh, phase change basically is that in which a solid, liquid, or gas is actually going to change which state it's in. So if I take an ice cube and I heat it up, it's going to change from a solid to a liquid. If I continue heating up that liquid, that liquid will eventually change to a gas. So a phase change is when temperature changes and matter will undergo a phase change, shifting from one form to another. So the different phase changes are listed up here. Melting is when you go from a solid to a liquid, like an, uh, an ice cube is melting to liquid. Freezing is where I take water, a liquid, and I'm going to place it in the freezer and it's going to change to a solid. Vaporization means I'm going to take that liquid and change it to a gas. Condensation is basically this morning when you went outside and you had dew or liquids on the windshield. And that's condensation where the gas outside is going to change and condense down to a liquid. Deposition and sublimation are the two that kind of bypass that phase. A deposition is where you take a gas and you're going to change it to a solid. The easiest one for this one would take carbon dioxide. If you take carbon dioxide, what we breathe out, and you condense it down, you can make a solid brick of dry ice. Now the sublimation, let's take that dry ice we just created from carbon dioxide being condensed down, leave it outside, and we just had Halloween not long ago, and it will change from the solid to a gas form, and there you get the spooky effects. Uh, temperature and phase change. When you have an object and they undergo all the different kinds of temperature changes, basically they are... Uh, during a phase change, the temperature is going to remain or stay the same. Okay? So here we have a phase change diagram. At stage one over here, this one is your, um, and let me put a color on here. Uh, let's see, pen color, let's choose green. So over here at stage one, this would be your solid. And please make sure to fill this in. Okay. So there's your solid at stage one. As the temperature, and the other thing down here, that this one is energy down here. And let's make sure we label this. So this is your energy on the x-axis. 
Okay, and over here I'm going to put a T for temperature. As temperature goes up, you can see that energy increases as well. But here at stage two, that one's kind of weird. So what happens here, that is a phase change. So on this one, if you have a solid and it's going to move to a liquid, and liquid is at stage three, okay, let me finish writing the word liquid, okay, then maybe that piece of ice will transfer to liquid and it might be that phase change right there would be melting and I'll just put the word melt right there. Now one thing I want you to notice is that it's a flat line, flat line. So that flat line right there means that the temperature is remaining constant during that time phase when it's going from a solid to a liquid. Okay, now we have stage three, which is a liquid, and it's moving to stage five, which is a gas. Okay, and then what we have right here at stage four, that is also a phase change as well. So what's happening there, instead of melting, it is boiling, okay, or vaporizing. So that would be boiling. And that is a phase change when you're going from a liquid to a gas or vaporization. And I'll put slash vapor on there. Okay. All right, so these are uh, events that occur during that phase change. Now, other temperature indicators, just to remember, when you have water, water basically, boiling point is when a liquid goes to a gas, and the common temperature that we have is 100 degrees Celsius. Let me see if I can get the pin color here and it would be a hundred degrees Celsius for water. And freezing the same thing. Freezing is when you have liquid going to a solid and the temperature range for water is zero. So those are the ranges. Now we have heat. And heat is basically a transfer of thermal energy from one object to another because of a heat temperature difference. Because of a temperature difference. Key to remember here Okay, key to remember is that heat flows from hot to things that are cold. Okay, not vice versa. So heat is always released and you're feeling it. There are three ways that heat can be released or felt, and that is through convection, conduction, and radiation. We're going to talk about each of those. Okay, now temperature also is how hot or cold an object is compared to a reference point. So as an object's temperature increases, the particles tend to move faster. And try to remember this. If it's getting hotter, people don't want to be close to each other when they're real hot. They want to move away from each other because, you know, it just is uncomfortable. So think about this. Um, think about um, when you want to buy shoes. The best time to buy shoes is in the middle of the day when the temperature is hottest because then your feet are swollen. So if you buy them early in the morning, then your feet are not as swollen. So later when you're wearing them, they're going to feel uncomfortable. So you need to always, uh, so as objects get heated, the particles tend to expand. Thermal energy is the potential or kinetic energy uh, of all the particles in an object. So thermal energy is that heat energy that's in an object. It depends on your mass, temperature, and also the phase change in which you're undergoing. Okay? So thermal energy is that. Specific heat is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of material by one degree Celsius. So every object has its own unique specific heat. The key that I want to focus on here is water. Water takes a long time to heat up. Best way to view that is when you go down to the beach. 
Yes, it's summertime in June, but if I go to the beach and I jump in the water, it's going to be ooh, cold. So it takes a long time for it to heat up. So the best time to go swimming is probably in August, late July and August, when the water has taken a long time to finally heat up. One thing that's kind of cool is once you heat up water, it takes a longer time for it to cool down. Now, if I heat up a piece of metal, ooh, quick, 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 I can heat it up. If you're blow drying your hair and you've got an earring on, it burns. It, uh, but if you take the heat away, it cools down very quickly. So metals heat up fast, but cool down fast. But water takes a long time to heat up. So it has a higher specific heat. It needs more heat to heat it up. But once it is heated, it takes a long time to uh, cool down. Now here, right here, is an example of a heat problem. And let's practice it. A metal rod and a brick are both in the sun. Assuming that both are the same mass, which property of matter will make one hotter to touch than the other? So what do you think? So what's going to make it heat up? Would it be its density, its specific heat, its melting point, or boiling point? And on here, think about it. The property is what we're looking at. The property is what we're looking at. So a property of matter that's unique to each other would be its specific heat. Okay? Here's another one. We have two liquids in two, the liquids in two beakers have an initial temperature of 50 degrees Celsius and they are left to cool. So this one is 100 milliliters of alcohol and here we have 100 milliliters of water. And look at this. Alcohol has a specific heat of this, 2,400 joules per kilogram degree cal uh, Celsius. And water has a much higher specific heat value. What will happen to the two liquids? Okay, and they're left at the cool. Will the ethyl alcohol cool first? The water will cool first. Both liquids will cool at the same rate. Or both liquids will remain at 50 degrees Celsius. So who has the higher specific heat? This one right here has the higher specific heat. So this one is actually going to keep and retain that heat because of the higher value. Because this one is less, the ethyl alcohol is actually going to cool first. And think about this. If you take rubbing alcohol and you put it on your hand, doesn't it cool down real quick? Sure does. Okay? All right. Now, there are three different ways that heat can be transferred. One way is by conduction. That means I can actually touch the metal, touch something, like touch a pot that's hot. Ooh, it hurts. So that's what conduction is. I am transferring by touching. Another one's by convection. We're going to transfer the thermal energy by vents or by circulating. A pot boiling would be an example. A fan blowing in your house. That is uh, convection. So you're transferring by, and here's the key word right here, circulation. So a fan blowing in here would be that. And we're going to practice this on Wednesday. And the last one is radiation and thermal energy from the sun. The key one right here, you want to view that sun. Okay? You want to view that sun. The sun right there is radiation, solar radiation. And here is just a recap of the different ways that heat is transferred. Again, conduction, keywords to note here, is by direct contact. Direct contact. Convection is by movement of fluids, gases and liquids. And the last one, radiation, is waves in space. So you're thinking of the sun. Okay? The sun. All right. And here you have different examples, but we're going to also practice those three methods, how heat is transferred. We also have conductors. Remember, this is just a recap. Conductors, remember, are those materials that are going to allow thermal energy as well as electricity to transfer well. Examples are metals and insulators that do not allow them to transfer such as air, nonmetals, plastics, 
uh, insulators, uh, coolers, styrofoam. All right. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Thank you.